with when you are in a situation where there are no distractions, there are no cell phones, there is no one else to tell you who you are, be it negative or positive. Who are you to yourself at the end of the day? And what does that mean to you? Who do you mean to you? I think for, for me, the biggest catalyst for change actually was the 60 days I did on the desert island because I'd, I'd developed a weird thing which is called a reflected sense of self. Um, and there's a sort of psychological term whereby if you walk into a room and you tell a joke and everyone laughs, you know, you're funny because everyone's just laughed. And, 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 and I think comedians like yourself probably are very susceptible to this as well. But um, or you walk the length of the Amazon and everyone tells you you're super tough and then you know that you're super tough. So that's an extreme version of it. Um, but then I went to this island and, and, and I was on my own and there was no camera people and there's no there was no nothing. And, and literally, I just wanted to be sick on the beach. And I, and I couldn't work out why I was spinning out so much. And and latterly, and it took a long time to work this out, I, I, I recognized that I just, I had no identify. I didn't, I didn't know who I was. And because um, I was so used to doing things in order to almost manipulate other people's opinion of me in order to know who I was. So um, I had to literally sit there on the beach and go like, okay, am I the sort of person who, I, do I want to be reliable? Do I want to be flaky and not turn up at stuff? Or do I want to always turn up at stuff? Do I want to be late? Do I want to be honest? Or do I want to cheat on people? And then literally I just... So I didn't have a pen or a paper, annoyingly, because it was uh, on a desert island naked. But I, uh, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had to sort of memorize this list of the things that I wanted to be. I was like, so the beginning part of this video talks about who we are as people and how we get our identity from the people around us. Um, coming from a perspective of healing from abusive relationships, I can see how that could be possible because... If somebody is always a negative toward you or they always speak negative negatively toward you or about you then you can kind of start to adopt that train of thought however on the other hand I think that from my experience God created us to accomplish a purpose like a task so within that in that creation he embeds in us certain qualities like certain gifts so with this video i find it very interesting the juxtaposition between having a built-in innate ability and innate gifts and also deciding to be the person that you want to become and i guess both to me both are true and when I think about the kind of person that I want to become, like I find myself to be, or I think I am, I see myself to be kind. I see myself to be um, resourceful, intelligent. Um, but at the same time, I'm not always comfortable being those things or saying good things about myself, even though I know I have positive qualities. And I don't know if it's because of a background of being in abusive relationships or if it's low confidence, like some of my friends say that I have um, not a strong sense of self because I allow myself to be in or I had allowed myself to be in abusive relationships. But I love the idea of being able to create who you are and who you want to become. And that fills my heart with a lot of hope that's really profound like when we talked before you said about you said about like that meeting your friends that i think were australian aboriginal friends and that they said like that you're you go oh, shut up i can hear your thinking and that like the, the same word that we use for they use for mind they use for a tangled fishing net and they also acknowledge the consciousness of the heart and the consciousness of the belly and and that they and like in modern you know in modern biology or anatomy it's recognized that there are neurological cells in the gut and neurological cells in the heart there is a type of thinking in inverted commas or at least awareness that takes place on that level Okay, so I also like or uh, find interesting when Russell Brand talks about there being consciousness in your belly and then there's consciousness in your heart. Um, 
I definitely believe that, but from what I, my life experience has taught me that those are, when I feel like a gut feeling or I feel like instincts and I act on those instincts, I feel like that's God talking to me. So it's a different knowing. It's not like a conscious in my head knowing, but it's more like a feeling. Like for instance, today I was tutoring a kid and I'm an English teacher. So the student needed help with science and we got paired up at my school. So I didn't really know what he needed when he came because today was the first day. And so I didn't really know what he needed help with. So I was thinking, assuming that he needed help with English, but I checked his English grades and his English assignment and he's doing pretty well with that class. And so I asked him what he needed and he said he needed science. And I at first thought, well, this is not going to work because I'm not a science teacher, right? And I automatically thought, well, I'm not capable of tutoring him in science. So what I thought, initially was that I would help strengthen his English skills. So I gave him, he had a laptop and I gave him some, an assignment to do online with this app that I really like, but he was doing pretty good and I was reading his writing and he seemed to grasp it really quickly. So I sat down while he was, while I gave him the assignment and I asked God, I said, okay, what should I do here? Like what would be best for me to do for him, for the student? And immediately I heard just, I heard help him with his science. And it was like, like almost like a voice. So for me, when Russell Brand says that if you have consciousness in your belly and consciousness in your heart and you have awareness there, to me, that's like a spiritual thing. So that's what I did. I helped the kid with his science and it actually worked out pretty well. And we had a good tutoring session. I also um, spoke to Carlo Rovelli, the physicist who writes a lot in popular sort of science books, you know, seven easy theories about science or whatever, you know, like he makes physics more accessible. He told me this thing Ed, that I've been thinking about ever since. He says on the most, and obviously he's translating it into a level that someone off a podcast can understand. He goes on the most basic level of material reality, there is nothing that is objectively stable and set the reality of um, the, the the most the reality of the quantum world is relational things exist in relationship to other things that's when they become solid as it were real so in a way saying there's no reality at all everything is potential it's there and it's not there and like so when you're saying that you found yourself as you in that um 60 days uh, the island one like um, that's naked and marooned isn't it like on that one like the, the sort of the psychological state that is induced in you there is you're stripped of relationship who are you who are any of us without relationship who am i if i don't have my dog to talk to i don't have the people i work with don't have my family don't have you know like the objects in my life or oh, it makes me realize oh fuck i'm a construct and like i love that it led you to a point where you said like well i'm gonna take responsibility and design design who I am. There's two sides of me that says, well, there are things that are reality. I mean, uh, there's this phone that I'm recording myself on. It, I can touch it. I see it. So that's reality, right? Or um, there's a door I'm looking at. There's a ring light. Those things I can touch and I can see. But at the other, on the other spectrum, like when I said, well, I'm not capable of tutoring somebody in science because I'm not a science teacher. I wanted to create that to be my reality when it didn't really need to be. And I guess when you're creating yourself and you determine what your limitations are and what you're mm, capable of doing, that is all in your own head. You create your own reality as opposed to letting somebody else tell you or dictate what you can and cannot do. In that instance, in that sense, I feel like there is no reality, really. You create what you want or you have the potential to create what you want. Well, it was that or just utter abandon and, 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 and I couldn't really do the other. I mean, it, it, it sounds melodramatic but it wasn't at all it was, <clears throat> it, was it, 
I would be so low, you know, you'd look at this beautiful sunset um, from my little cave and I, I just don't care. I absolutely don't care. That isn't going to get food in me tomorrow. I, I don't, I, and then I was getting zero enjoyment for quite a lot of the time and I could have just spiraled downwards, you know, you know, everyone's got, I think the capability of, of spiraling. And then there's a part of you that just goes, you know, pulls, pulls you up, doesn't it? And you just go, look, come on, Ed, you can do this. Like, let's just take a deep breath and let's hold your hand through this experience. And it is scary. And it is, you know, you're having to go into the very depths and cores of your whole psychology. And, you know, I, I did go into therapy in latter years, um, but month, sorry, a year and a half after that experience, I went into therapy and, 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 um, and that was one of the most transformative periods of my life. And, and I think, you know, it, I didn't, again i wasn't straight jacket or anything like that and i didn't have the same sort of um addiction issues as other people and stuff but i did feel that you know having a certain level of self-awareness in life just makes you it makes you more honest doesn't it because i think so many people are not they're not just not honest to other people but they're not really honest to themselves because there's bits of themselves that they that they don't really want to explore and whenever they think about it they think go and have a cigarette or they go and have a drink or they or go and have a bite of chocolate or they open their phone probably more usually nowadays yes and i and i think I think not having all those distractions was was what was key to the sort of to the catalyst to change for me because on the island because um because there was nowhere to hide and and therefore it was quite terrifying but but equally but pretty powerful as well and if you find yourself struggling and you have two options either you give up and you spiral out of control like you said or you lift yourself up but then my question is, is it you that really lifts yourself up or are you being assisted by someone or something outside of you that you really cannot see? So going back to the spiritual realm, because if you don't, so let's say you are on a stranded island and you don't know what to do and you are afraid, but then you start to get ideas and things start to click for you and you start to find your way through a scary situation or you find yourself being capable of doing things that you didn't know you were capable of is that your reality or is that something outside of yourself that is assisting you to become who you were created to be so like that kind of juxtaposition that i was saying earlier So when you find yourself distracted from or not being able to be distracted from material things or from relationships and you find yourself confronted with who you really are, who is that person? Whether it is that you were constructed to be a, a being with a destiny that was already embedded inside of you or you just decide to create your own version of yourself with when you are in a situation where there are no distractions, there are no cell phones, there is no one else to tell you who you are, be it negative or positive, who are you to yourself at the end of the day? And what does that mean to you? Who do you mean to you? Mm. 